Okay, so the app is called New Creator, and even though it's named New Creator, any YouTuber can use it. I use it every day. As we're getting into the app, I wanna let you know that you do not have to create an account, and if you choose, you do not have to connect your YouTube channel to this, because I know that some people are like, eh, I don't wanna connect my YouTube channel to anything. I completely get it, so because of that, you don't have to connect your YouTube channel to this. If you choose to, then you'll see some stats right up here at the very top. You'll see your channel name, your channel handle, and you also have the option here to have a QR code. But if you don't connect your channel, then at this point in time, you're not losing anything except those things. So if you don't want to, that's completely okay. But let's dive into the actual features. So first, up here in the top right-hand side, you have an option here to where you can create a QR code for your channel. YouTube does this already, but the reason that I put it in here in the app is for things like this. So let's say that I am out with friends or I'm at a conference. Then in that case, I can have this to where I can show it right here as a widget. I can put this on my home screen. I can put it over here in this side screen. And then it shows up right here where you can just have people scan that if you're telling people about your YouTube channel. And another thing that you're gonna notice when it comes to the widgets is you also have your content planner. That information also shows up here in widget form as well if you choose to use that. And it comes in all different sizes. So you can see here that it shows five different things that are coming. And then right here on my main page, I have it to where it shows two so that I can leave room for other apps. Now, when it comes to this QR feature, we have the side here that is YouTube with that widget, but you also have the ability here to add a custom link. So let's say you go to a conference or something like that and you wanna add a link to your LinkedIn account instead. In that case, you can create a custom QR code there and then you can make a widget out of that or screenshot it or whatever you need to do. And then when you're connecting with people there, you can just have them scan that code. Next, we have the content calendar. When it comes to the content calendar, you have a month view, you have a week view, and then you also have a day view. Now let's talk about how all of this works. So when you go into the content calendar, one of the things that you're going to see is that you have content type up at the top. Now with the content type, you can choose video, you can choose live stream, podcast, short, whatever it is. And as you change this, the information that is down here in the bottom that you can fill in is going to be different. So you can see it's different for podcasts in terms of guest names. Um, if you do a short, then you're going to have a related video link. If you do a post, then you can actually store posts in here if you want to. As a part of this content planner, you have the basic version, which is what you're looking at right now, to where you can add your content type, you can track your progress on that particular piece of content, you can add your title, you can sketch out a thumbnail idea, you can add any notes that you need for the video, choose your publish date, publish time, and if you choose to, you can also set a reminder to be reminded about this piece of content anytime that you want. In addition, in addition to that, if you're a newer content creator and you don't really know the best ways to use all of these things, for every item in here, you're gonna see a little info icon over on the right-hand side. If you tap on that, then it's gonna give you tips on writing more effective titles, and it's gonna give you some title formulas and those sorts of things. And this is available for everything that's in here so that as you're using it, you can also learn along the way. But when it comes to this content calendar, if you are somebody that's being more strategic, you can go to your settings tab and then in your settings tab, you can turn on advanced mode. And then we go back to the content calendar and you see here that we have a lot more information. So here you can decide what keywords you're targeting. You can decide what playlist that you're gonna be adding the video to, the end screens that you're gonna be linking to, your pinned comments and so on to really help you think through all of these things that are required when it comes to publishing videos to YouTube. But this feature overall is a fantastic way to make sure that you're just staying on top of your content, that you're planning things out, and that you're thinking things out as well when it comes to the videos that you're publishing. Next, let's go to the tools. So at the very top of the screen, you're gonna see what's called the observatory. What this is, is let's say that you are on YouTube and you're looking at content. So in this example, I'm going to just go to my friend Brian G. Johnson's homepage, and let's say that I really like this thumbnail that he has right here. Then I can click on the three-dot menu over on the right-hand side of the screen, and this works on any page of YouTube if you're in the app. And then I can click Share, and then I scroll all the way over and I click on More, and then I hit New Creator. And then here, it's going to store his thumbnail, it's gonna store the title, and it's gonna store a link to the video. And then you can also put in whatever notes it is that you want on that particular piece of content. And then you can tag it. So for example, let's say that I really like the vibe that Brian has in his thumbnail. In that case, I can say, okay, well, I like Brian's thumbnail, and then I save that idea. Next, when I go back into the new creator app, 
I click into the observatory and then you see Brian's thumbnail right there. Now this particular part is also part of the workflow when it comes to testing your thumbnails and making sure that the thumbnails that you're making are effective, but we're gonna talk about that here in just a little bit. But when it comes time to make thumbnails or write titles, what you can do is you can come into this area and you can sort by the little chips at the top. So I can say title, um, if I'm looking for thumbnail ideas, I can click that. If I'm looking for graphic ideas, then I can click that particular one. If I like the idea of the video, then I can click on that and then I can find that idea for the video. But the idea is that this is a great place to store things that you're inspired by. So when it comes time for you to make content, you can use this as inspiration. This is also a really easy way to download your own thumbnails because once you have your videos in here, then up in the top right-hand side of the image, you'll see a little download icon. And if you tap that, then it downloads that thumbnail into your photo library. Next, we have the Video Idea Explorer. This helps you come up with an unlimited amount of video ideas and they're sorted by different ways that people look for content. So for example, I'm just gonna put CapCut in here because a lot of people watching this are gonna know what CapCut is. So I'm gonna hit Explore and then you're going to see here that it has all of the different things that people look for when it comes to CapCut organized in ways that people look for content. So here we have how to. So here, how to cap cut, how to cap cut edit, how to cap cut edit anime, so on and so forth as we go through this. And then as we come down here, let's say best and top, we click on that best cap cut anime edit, best, ca best cap cut filter, best cap cut PC settings and so on. And this is a great way, regardless of the type of content that you make, to make sure that you're making content about things that people care about. But as you are going through this list, anytime that you see something and you're like, oh yeah, I could definitely make a video about that. Then all you have to do is click on the little green plus icon over on the right hand side and then it's gonna give you the option to add this to your video ideas or not. And with this feature and every other feature in the app, there's always an icon up in the top right-hand side of the screen to where if you tap the little info icon, then it gives you information about how to use that feature and why you should be using that feature. Next, we have the content ID log. So if you're like me, you've got video ideas in your email account, you've got video ideas in your notes app, you've got video ideas in Google Docs, you've got video ideas like all of these places all over the place. This is a way that you can centralize everything and you can organize it by the content type. So let me show you. So here, if we go into the content ID log, you can see at the very top, we have chips to where we can sort it. So we can say, okay, what are my video ideas? Cause it's time for me to make some videos. What are the ideas that I have for shorts? Cause I'm sitting here batching shorts right now. Um, what are some ideas that I have for some live streams that I'm gonna do? Um, what do, ideas do I have for my podcast? What ideas do I have for posts that I'm gonna be posting? And this is a great way to just keep track of those ideas and keep everything centralized by the content type so that you can easily sort it and just sift through everything that's relevant to that particular content type. And how this whole thing works is if you click on the plus icon up at the top, you just put a title for your idea, put a description for the idea, and then you select what content type it is, and then you hit save. And then as you can see here, you can save as many ideas in here as you would like. Next, we have the thumbnail inspector. So when it comes to the thumbnail inspector, I'm really proud of this particular tool and I think you're gonna get a ton of value out of this. And the reason for that is because this is designed to help you see things that you might be overlooking. So we all get caught up in making the thumbnails and focusing on the imagery and making good titles and the synergy between the two. But sometimes, even if you have a bunch of experience, you can just overlook things. So this tool is made to help you not overlook things or at least bring things to your attention that you might be overlooking. So how it works is you click on the thumbnail and then I'm just gonna use mine here and then you type in the title. Now this is really important to make sure that you type in the title that you're actually going to use for the video because what this tool does is it looks for the synergy between your thumbnail and title because the thumbnail and title work together as a team to win the click. So because of that, in this case, I'm just gonna put the title for things to never do on YouTube because that's something what that video title is like and I'm gonna hit analyze thumbnail. And just so you know, this can take a little bit of time because of course it's sending your thumbnail out into the ether and then it's running a bunch of analysis on it and then it's gonna report back and then it's gonna print out a report on exactly the things that you should be aware of. So here you can see as I start scrolling down the page, it gives you an analysis of the thumbnail in terms of what is the main subject, what is the secondary subject, the video topic prediction, click likelihood, title and thumbnail, click potential. It helps identify the niche that this could be for. It says the target audience who might respond to this content. It gives an emotional impact in terms of like, what does it make you feel like? And then it gives you a score breakdown. So with this particular thumbnail, it was a pretty good thumbnail and this video is doing great. But here you can see all of the different things that it shows you in terms of topic identification, thumbnail title synergy, the main subject, the text, the color, the clarity, composition, design, and so on. 
And this is, again, to help you be able to identify things that you might be overlooking when it comes to the thumbnail. And then down here at the bottom, it gives you a quick report in terms of exactly, you know, what is good about this thumbnail. And then it gives you strengths and improvement suggestions on things that you can do to make it better. And then from there, you can click save to camera roll. And then when you do that, then it's going to save this report to your camera roll. And then you can review it at any time that you need to, like when you're working on the thumbnail and things like that. But I showed you a good thumbnail. So let me show you a bad thumbnail so you can see what that looks like. So as you can see here, we put this bad thumbnail in there and the report looks completely different than the thumbnail that we had in here prior. Next, we have the title workshop. Now, when it comes to title workshop, I'm adding even more tools in here around titles. But for now, this title workshop is completely different than any other title tool that you've used before. So with a lot of the tools out there, you have to already know what your title is. With this, all you have to do is know what your video is about and you can explain that. And then once you explain that, then this is going to give you titles based on different titling strategies to bring attention to your video. So in this example, I'm gonna say taking a fishing trip with my friend and catching a huge carp. Now, if I wanted to make sure that the word fishing was in this, then I would of course put fishing as a keyword. And then if I wanted to also do the niche, then I would hit that button and then I would do fishing or something like that, or maybe outdoors for the niche. But you don't need to put those options in there for the keyword or the niche, those are both optional, but let me show you. Once you have the description filled out, you just hit generate titles. And similar to the thumbnail tool, this can also take a moment because it's having to do a lot of analysis in order to give you the best results possible. So as we can see here, we have a search optimized section. So with this, this is things that people might search for around this and how you can optimize your title for that. Next, we have clickbait style, which is a little bit more sensational when it comes to the titles. And then we have broad appeal titles, which are titles that are more appropriate for larger audiences. And then we have different format ideas. Now, when it comes to format ideas, I recommend that you use that if you're somebody that comes up with your titles and thumbnails before you make your video, so that it can just give you options on other ways that you can present this content. But if you get through all of those thumbnail ideas and you're like, eh, yeah, none of these are really for me, then in that case, you can go up to generate new titles and then you can change the description, you can remove the keywords and see what else it comes up with. So here, I'm just gonna say, catching a huge fish while out on the lake. And you have up to 500 characters, but to, for the sake of saving time, I'm just using a sentence. So I'm gonna hit generate titles here. And then you can see with that little tweak, it gives us a lot of different options for titles based on the different titling strategies. Now, as a part of this, if you find a title that you like, what you wanna do is you wanna click on the little copy icon over on the right-hand side, and then you can paste that into your content idea log, or you can go straight over to your content calendar and you can paste it into that. In the future, I'm gonna build a bridge between these. You can just hit a button to get it over there. But for now, just copy it and paste it over there. Next, you have the camera settings. So when it comes to camera settings, if you are somebody that shoots a lot on your phone in a certain environment, you need to make sure that you're saving the settings. Or if you have cameras and you need to make sure that you're saving the settings when you get something that looks really good so that if you take your camera and you go vlog somewhere, you take it outside and do something else, that you can always dial it right back into the perfect shot that you have set up. Then in that case, the camera settings is going to help you there because you can save up to four different cameras in the settings form, and you can always refer back to this in order to make sure that you get that perfect shot every time. Next, you have a script warm-up timer. What this does is it helps you just spend some time warming up your voice, and during that time, if you are just reading through your scripts or maybe practicing your bullet points, then you can hit the timer on here, and what's going to happen is as you're going through the process of rehearsing, it's going to give you just a ballpark idea of about how long it might take to get through it, but more importantly, if you just give this about five minutes or maybe even three minutes if you're conservative, then you are just practicing talking out loud. That's gonna help you get your voice warmed up before you make videos. The next feature is because as you probably know, mental health when it comes to YouTube is always important. But when it comes to YouTube, content creators struggle with that sometimes because of burnout and things like that. So because of that, I put a break timer in here. And what this does is you can set a certain time limit and then you can hit start. And then what's going to happen is it just gives you a countdown for time to breathe and all of that so that you can just kind of sit down, refocus, set your phone down, and then it's going to play an ending bell as soon as that's finished. So basically it's kind of like a built-in meditation timer. Next you have checklists. Now when it comes to these checklists, there's a lot of different things that we all have to do with our workflows and they're all gonna be different. So because of that, there is a default list in here for each of these items. And I'm just gonna show you one because they all work the same. But let's say for example, the recording list. Here, it's just things that you can go through and just check off and make sure that you have your mic turned on and things like that that we sometimes forget. Make sure that your focus is set right and all that. 
And then as you go through these, then it just makes sure that you have everything set up properly or while you're uploading videos that you're doing everything properly there and you're not missing anything. But this is preset, but you do have the option if you go up to the top right to edit this, and then here you can move things around if you want. You can clear all of this information by clicking the little menu up here at the top of the screen and hitting clear all. And then from here, you can start building them out yourself by clicking that menu again and hitting add item. And then you can just start building out the checklist as it makes sense to you and your workflow so that you don't ever forget anything that's important. And then at any time, if you wanna restore the defaults, then you just click on that and then it brings them all back. Next, we have resources. Now, when it comes to resources, we have a glossary in here. So if you hear something and you're like, hey, I'm not really sure what that is as it relates to being a content creator, then you can search in here and it will pull those terms up. Now we have this filled out with analytics information, camera information, lighting information, audio information, monetization, and so on. And there's more things that I'm gonna add to this, but it's already filled out with a lot of the language that we use as content creators. Next under resources, we have creator tools. Now, as you know, as a content creator, there's a lot of different things that we use at different times for different things. And sometimes we need something, but we don't really know what to go to for that thing. This area right here helps you with that. So you have creator apps, you have growth and workflow tools, you have video editing tools, you have thumbnail design tools, you have audio tools, content management tools, live streaming tools. And the whole thing with this is just to help guide you on the right things to use and the things that have good reputations. Because when it comes to creator tools, there's just a lot of garbage out there too. So this page actually focuses on all of the best things that you can use for the job. Next under resources, we have creator support. Now as a content creator, it's important to know the rules of the game. So because of that, I have community guidelines links in here. I have YouTube terms of service links in here. I have links for chat and email support for your YouTube channel. Um, I have a Twitter link for YouTube's creator liaison. I have where you can connect directly with Team YouTube on X. So in the event that you do have some type of issue with your channel, then you can make sure that you connect with them and a direct link to the YouTube Help Center as well. And then of course, if we go to the settings, we have light mode for those of you that like light mode instead of dark mode. We have the ability here to turn the advanced mode on or off. We have the default publishing time. So if you typically publish at a certain time, you can just set that here so you don't have to set it every time in the content calendar. You can turn off the monetization tracker. You can export and import all of your data. So if you don't use iCloud Sync, then in that case, you can just export everything as a backup and just keep it on your device or on your computer or something. So then in the event that you know you like get a new phone or something like that, then you can just import everything right back in and you can just keep on trucking. And then from there, we have the support and legal area a place to manage your subscription, another link to the tutorial just to make sure that in case you need it, it's there. And then of course the danger zone where it'll clear all of your data from iCloud and your Google connection. Another thing you should know about this app is in addition to it being available on the iPhone, it is also awesome on an iPad as well, regardless of the orientation that you prefer. And it's the only app, by the way, even from the major companies that make creator tools, like this is the only app that actually has that iPad version that's actually an iPad version. And if you have a family plan with your Apple account, you have other creators in your family that would also find this app useful, then they can just use it automatically if you get it. And just so you know, I'm making this the best app available for content creators. Creators. So if you have ideas and you're like, hey, it'd be way better if you could do this, I'm not some major company where I have to go through all these approvals and all that stuff in order to get it done. I can sit on my computer back there, grind it all out, get it done and get it out if I think it's a cool idea. So if you have any improvement ideas when you start using it, I am all ears because it's gonna be the best app for content creators. And again, we're already pretty close. And if you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much. I'm glad that you are interested in this. And again, if you have any feedback at all, let me know. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.